growth of topological invariance of local asymmetric spaces. So in particular, I will talk about how the volume of those spaces tends to control their topological invariance. And I will start with, start with a real simple example. So let's look at the symmetric space uh, H2, so hyperbolic upper half plane. Uh, we will think of it as a SL2R divided by the maximal compact subgroup SO2. And then we'll be looking at uh, sur hyperbolic surfaces, so uh, manifolds of form gamma uh, x over gamma, uh, where gamma is a lattice. So in this case, it's easy to see that the, the volume completely determines the, uh, the topology because we have Gauss Bonnet. So which roughly says that minus minus one is the volume of manifold divided by four pi. Because genus determines completely the topology of the surface, everything is just determined by, by the volume. So let's look at now some more general symmetric spaces. So for me, it will be always G mod K, where G is a semi-simple, semi-simple, the group and k is maximal compact and we'll be looking again at manifolds or orbifolds of form x mod gamma where gamma in g is lattice okay and of course here we cannot expect such nice formula uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is still true that volume controls at least some invariants, topological invariants of M. So you have an old result of uh, Gromov, uh, Baumann, and Schroen. Baumann, Schroeder. Uh, which says that there exists a constant depending only on x such that for every m like this, uh, the Betty numbers of m are bounded by constant times the volume of m. Where I remind you that uh, those Betty numbers are uh, dimensions over q of uh, rational homology groups. OK, so therefore, uh, it makes sense to look at uh, Betty numbers normalized by volume. So look at uh, bi m divided by volume. Maybe there are some natural conditions under which this should converge to something. It turns out that this led to uh, a lot of fruitful research. So I will introduce one of the condition, one one condition that implies that this converges. So yeah lim m to x in some sense. So it will be called uh, benjamin Schramm topology. So uh, and I will just define what it means for a sequence of local symmetric, symmetric spaces to converge to x. So let's say we have sequence mi. So it converges to x in benjamin Schramm topology if and only if the following holds. So for every positive rate, uh, the volume of our thin part of M uh, divided by volume of M I, this goes to zero. And this is the part of the manifold uh, where the injectivity rate is less than, is less than R. So let's draw a picture. Injectivity radius at the point of manifold is the radius of a largest ball that lives isometrically to the universal cover. So it will be very small here, and here, and here, but large, for example, here. OK. And under this condition, it is true. This is a theorem of uh, Abert, Bergeron, uh, Beringer, and Gelander. Uh, that uh, unless our symmetric space is equal to H3, 
then uh, this Benjamin Nisham convergence implies that uh, Betty normalized Betty numbers converge. And they converge to something called L to Betty numbers that depends only on the uh, symmetric space X. And is uh, com computable. So we, we, we know those values. <sighs> OK, so that's what happens for uh, uh, Betty numbers over the rationals. Is it actually false for H3? Sorry? Is it false? Yes, uh, for H3, there is then surgery that using it you can produce sequences of manifolds that satisfy this condition but uh, uh, okay um, let me let me uh, maybe get back to this later because <laughs> I don't want to say anything stupid there, there is some problem caused by then surgery Uh, in the limit, in some sense, it can. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now uh, this this condition looks a bit maybe strong, but turns out it's very generic. So, uh, for example, if G is uh, higher rank, higher rank, simple, then every sequence. So every. Mi converges Benjamin Schramm unless they stabilize. Uh, if G is not higher rank, then this, is no, this no longer needs to be true. But uh, for natural families of lattices like congruence arithmetic lattices, sometimes it's true. So if G is equal to uh, SL2 R or SL2 C, then so I proved. Uh, that uh, okay, so I proved it for torsion free lattices, and then with Jean Hembo, we proved it for uh, arbitrary lattices. Ari of course, always congruence arithmetic. Uh, uh, so I'll write it like this they converge Benjamin Schramm. Uh, to x if mi are congruence congruence arithmetic so meaning that like given by number theoretic construction so okay uh, not necessarily not necessarily but in this type of problem in some sense, the, the, the non-compact lattices, the compact co-compact lattices are the most difficult to deal with. Uh, okay, so that covers probably the case of uh, rational, Betty rational Betty numbers, but there are many other invariants that we can look at, especially uh, mod p Betty numbers. So, what about uh, limit as m converges Benjamin Schramm to x? Uh, of uh, mod p Betty numbers, which I'll denote by uh, B I M F P. Okay, so we expect that there should be some invariant of, of, of x that captures those limits, but nothing like this has been has been done. So in the last I don't know few minutes, I would like to tell you uh, like of new new. Uh, method to show that this is 0. So this is uh, done through studying the geometry of minimal representatives of, of homology classes in those and on those manifolds. Actually, how much time do I have? Um, two minutes. Three. Three minutes, OK. Ex excellent. OK, so I'll just maybe s start by stating the result. So the result says that, OK, if uh, 
x is higher rank and uh, uh, and we look at first Betty number over f2 then this is zero then this limit is zero so limit as m converges Benjamin Schramm to x of first Betty number with coefficients in f2 divided by volume this is zero okay so I have to stress that uh, as opposed to rational Betty numbers th this guy is not accessible by analytic methods really so we have to do something else and uh, the way I do it is to by showing that every representative cycle of a first homology class uh, can be made very short. No, but this, it's higher rank, right? It's oh no 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 we c yeah yeah oh. I, I I can say it it surely doesn't work, but I the idea break, breaks down totally for rank one spaces. Yeah, so uh, this is res uh, corollary of the following. So for every alpha in H1 M F2, uh, there exists a cycle. We imagine this is a just a bunch of closed curves, coefficients in F2, uh, such that uh, alpha is represented by C, and length of C is smaller up to a constant than volume of the thin part. Well, this constant depends on on just x. Volume of our thin part plus uh, volume of m divided by r power one half. Okay. So if you now if we take this, this holds for every higher rank symmetric space m modeled after x. And now if we take a benjamin schramm convergence sequence, then this converges to zero, and we can then slowly let r go to infinity. And we deduce that, in particular, uh, if m converges benjamin schramm to x, then uh, uh, this length of c is small o of volume. And this is the key to this estimate on the uh, dimension of first mod 2 homology. Uh, it's, it's hidden here. Uh, there is an algorithm that deforms representatives, and the stopping condition is some ugly geometric thing. But what do you use it for? Uh, actually, not. It's very pure higher rank condition, so it's just presence. Of the fact that every geodesic in our thick part is contained in a local flat of where its radius r. And then I, I can deform the geodesics inside the local flat, mm. like this. And th this, this doesn't change the length very much. But on the, other hand, on the other hand, if I get two of them close by using this method, and then cut and reconnect, then I can re keep reducing length. And like stopping condition forces this length to be very short. Okay. And I would love to do this for odd primes, but there are many difficulties. Yeah, it's really just for F2 for now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.